on the phone with us, one of the legends of the WWE. He's in a brand new movie called Damage. It's out now on DVD. He is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold, can I get a hell yeah to start out? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Makes my day. Stone Cold, how many t-shirts do you guys normally go through? When when you were back in your heyday of wrestling, how many t-shirts would you guys rip up and tear up on, a, on like a weekly basis? Oh, I don't know. I, I know we sold a lot more than we tore up. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good business to be in. <laughs> and, you know, during that whole time that you were becoming... You know, when I was when I was in college and in high school, high school was when you were beginning to become the huge superstar of the WWE. When I was in college, Stone Cold having the championship, it was like the Yankees winning the World Series awesome. or the Lakers winning the NBA title. Uh, when you were going through all that, you were also sort of aided in your popularity by being on Celebrity Deathmatch. How did that come about, uh, and, and was that something you really enjoyed doing? A celebrity Deathmatch? Yeah. You know, I don't even remember how that came about. I, I think it was just uh, them... Uh, saying, hey, this guy's white hot, and, uh, you know, people are kind of digging him, and let's make this show. And and uh, they just approached us with, uh, you know, th- through WWE, because they're MTV, and it's good people to be in, in business with. Sure. And, hell, I just go in and uh, do the voiceovers, read the script, and, and go about my business. It was really uh, easy for me to do, pain-free, didn't take up a whole lot of time. And, uh, man, I'd love to do a lot more of that stuff, actually. Not really celebrity deathmatch, but I just love the voiceover stuff. The uh, the new movie is called Damage, and uh, in this year you are a guy in an underground fighting league. How, what is it like to go through fight training for someone like you who has done, you know, fighting entertainment for so long? Well, it's different just because it is so different. And, uh, you know, in the ring, as long as I was there, for as long as I did it, you know, uh, I got to be so good at that. When, when you get someone who's got some skills, they know what you're bringing to the uh, table and you know what they're bringing, and it's really kind of like dancing, so to speak. Uh, but fighting for camera, you know, you've got to you got to uh, hit marks. You can't, you know, obviously hit your uh, opponent that you're fighting in the face. You've got to you got to rely on camera angles to cover all those uh, all those things up. So, uh, and if you screw up, if you throw a right when you're supposed to, at the face, and you're supposed to throw a left at the body, and you drill that guy, and he has a broken nose or, or a black eye, you just screwed up continuity. So there's pressure to perform and not screw things up and injure the other guy. That being said. You know, I moved a guy's nose about two inches on the other side of his face and damaged, so. That's what I was going to ask. I was like, did did that actually happen on the set yeah, at any it point? Happened. My, 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 uh, he's doubled me in about two movies since, and the guy's name is Paul Lazenby, and mm-hmm. uh, just a tough-as-nails guy, but and, and just a, a real sweetheart of a guy. But, man, I tell you what, I threw a left hook at him and got a little close. Obviously, it was my fault, and I mm-hmm. uh, just moved his nose over. And after he moved his nose back over to where it's supposed to be and the blood started <laughs> pouring out, and, uh we laughed our asses off after that, but uh, I, I was uh, very, uh, uh, very sorry that I drilled him. But he's a wonderful, wonderful guy, and we've worked together on three movies now. What do you, what do you say to him in that situation? Like, oh, that's my bad. That's, I'm that's sorry, an MB. A million times. <laughs> that's an MB. That's, I like how you laugh. Now, at any point, did the director be like, you know what? Let's just go with it. Just keep hitting each other. Let's go. No, you know the uh, actually the uh, and I'll clean the story up because we're on radio. But the, the camera was on me. It was on his back. It was kind of like a montage sequence of punches. And uh, I threw about four punches, and I had about six more to throw. Then I caught him with the left, moved his nose over. I looked at him, and I, th- and I say to him, oh, shoot. And I said the other word. <laughs> and he just looks at me, and he goes, he goes, he goes, keep, he goes keep going. So, man, I just kept throwing punches at him. I was pretty rattled at that point, but he's the one with the, with the, with the nose missing. Yeah. And he just says, keep going. So we kept going. Nice. <laughs> We're talking to Stone Cold Steve Austin. His uh, new movie is called Damage. It's on DVD now. Uh, speaking of hurting people on the set, what is this I read about you breaking Sylvester Stallone's neck? Well, you know what? I was uh, sitting in a deer stand at my ranch in South Texas, and my phone starts blowing up, and then I'm just hearing all these messages about breaking uh, Sly's neck. And, you know, when I think of broken neck, I think, you know, like destruction. Oh, I was yeah. about to say, you, uh, you know what a broken yeah, neck feels yeah, like. Exactly. I, I know a little bit about the neck. <laughs> Did you send him a brace, maybe one I of your old you ones? Know, you know, what What happened was, I mean, we, me and Sly fought for two days. It was a very, very physical fight scene, and he just kept wanting to, to, to jack it up higher and higher and higher to level it, you know, the high intensity, and it's a bust-ass fight. But anyway, I think I had him in, a, in, in some kind of chokehold or something, and I think uh, it, basically we re-aggravated an old injury that he had, and you know he got through the movie, he finished everything, and he got beat to shreds in this movie because it was such a physical shoot. Mm-hmm. And, you know he's doing everything, but uh, you know just a few months ago he had a I think a plate put in his neck, and uh, I, I don't think I'm going to technically take uh, all the blame or the credit, as it were, for. <laughs> Breaking his neck, but I am mentioned uh, in the same sentence with breaking his neck and Sly. 
You it, you took down Rambo. Just say that. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> he was expendable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the name of the movie. The, your next movie, which is going to be out this summer, it's called The Expendables. You look at the cast sheet on this, man. You, what the hell? You, Stallone, Jason Statham, Def, uh, Jet Li, Dolph Lundgren, Randy Couture, Terry Crews, Eric Roberts, Mickey Rourke, uh, and then you got Bruce Willis and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger doing cameos. We, you know, we, we mentioned this earlier. When you were at the peak of your fame in the WWE, you were the New York Yankees, you were the Los Angeles Lakers of that. What is it like now to go on a set like that one, and you're the tough guy, but you're one of like eight superstar I mean, tough guys. You are on the with set. the Yankees of action movie stars. I mean, this is like, and this is the all time Yankees. This isn't just one era of the Yankees. This is the entire Yankees team from the whole history. You know, it was interesting to watch the guys kind of, you know, mill around, and you know, everybody. There was a lot of egos, but you know, obviously, <laughs> you know, with a lot of guys, everybody was going to be cool. And, uh, you know, Sly was the ringleader because he wrote, directed, and, and, and uh, you know, was starring in it. It was, it was his baby and his creation. So he was kind of the lead guy. Uh, now I know that I wasn't there when, when Arnold and uh, Bruce Willis did their things, but it was a lot of fun, man. And you, you got guys that have been that successful, and, and I'm in that mix. It was, it was, it was neat to uh, rub shoulders with those guys and watch how they go about their work and their business. Do you uh, do you keep up with wrestling now? Are you an uh, MMA guy? What what sort of occupies oh, your time? I keep up. Yes, I watch every single UFC pay per view there is. I'm going to miss one Saturday because I'm traveling. Uh, actually, if I make it home, I think I'll make. I will buy that fight. I get every UFC pay per view there is. I just had dinner last night with Paulie Dan- Dangerously and Brock Lesnar. Oh wow, uh, he's in town. And uh, how's Brock doing? By the way, with him. he's doing great. He looks like a million bucks, and I think he's uh, he looks 100 percent healthy. And we're laughing and joking. So. Uh, he's fine, but yes, I still keep up with both businesses. You, you know, you you hear so much from guys that have fought Brock Lesnar and guys that do uh, announcing for UFC to say there are times that you can tell he's already beaten someone before he steps in the ring because he's so physically imposing. You did a, a short storyline with him in WWE. Was he that way in the wrestling ring? I mean, I know to a certain degree, you know, WWE is a little bit more scripted, obviously, but still, just he's such a specimen. You have to be scared to death of him the first time you see him. Oh, you know what? I've never, I, I've never gotten a ring with him. As a matter of fact, that was one of the reasons I left uh, WWE <laughs> was a, a deal with uh, Brock, and we talked about that last night at length. But I've seen that guy up close and personal do some crazy, uh, freaky things as far as strength, quickness, and explosion yeah. go. And uh, he's just, uh, I, you know, guys like him. Those, that's like that one in, one in a million genetic guy, yeah. <laughs> and that's how special I think he is. And I, I think he's a future UFC Hall of Famer, and it's going to be interesting to see who wins the Carvin Mir fight. And uh, it would be neat to see Mir win it because I think it's better box office. Those two guys oh, yeah. fight. And then, uh, you know, as soon as those guys, they fought twice, It's that's the Hatfield and McCoys of today. I'd like to see it, too, because MMA really is taking over where boxing left off years ago. And now, oh, yes. and, and Mir, and, Mir and, and Lesnar would be fantastic to get together again. It's a great box office. And, uh, you know, the, I watched the, uh, the Pacquiao fight the other day. Oh, yeah. Uh, just, just because I wanted to see. I wanted to see the fight, but also wanted to see, uh, you know, what, how Texas at the new Dallas Cowboys Stadium looked inside yeah. on TV for a boxing event. And, you know, boxing, they're just not the stars coming up that they used to have. You know, with your Sugar Rays, your Marvelous Marvel Haglers, your mm-hmm. Thomas Hitman, Hearn, your Ali, you know, you, the list goes on. But those guys really aren't around these days. And uh, just the, 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 I love boxing, but UFC is just more exciting, more explosive. Mm-hmm. You've got the best of wrestling versus the best of stand up versus, I mean, with, with uh, the best of uh, the jiu jitsu skills. The guys these days in that sport are un, un, unbelievable athletes. Could you see yourself following the uh, the Herschel Walker pattern and getting in a little bit later in your athletic life to uh, to oh, USC? Oh, at this stage of the game, I would totally get smoked. <laughs> I am I am into reality and not fantasy. Now, had I grown up way back in the day, and when I was changing channels at seven or eight, and came across Ultimate Fighting uh, rather than pro wrestling, maybe I could have went down that path. It's certainly my mentality. Uh, to have the killer instinct from my football days, but make no mistake about it, I, I was a pro wrestler. I'm working on being an actor, and I've got a ton of respect for the MMA fighters, particularly the UFC brand. Well, you got to stop uh, beating up your co-stars, and then you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I did that on a movie set. I didn't want to have to get the director to pull that guy off of me. <laughs> He's Stone Cold Steve Austin. Damage is on DVD right now, and The Expendables is coming to theaters this summer. Stone Cold, it was an absolute pleasure, man. Thanks for uh, taking the time. Hey, thank you guys for having me, man. Y'all are in a good neck of the woods over there. I love that part of the country. Well, next time you're uh, in this area, stop by the studio. Definitely. You got it. Take it easy, Stone Cold. Bye-bye.